Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the men and women of the United States Air Force will observe a change of responsibility and welcome Chief Master Sergeant David A. Flossie as the 20th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force and pay special tribute to the 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Joanne S. Bass, on the occasion of her retirement from active duty. The host for today's ceremony is the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, General David W. Alvin. We are also honored to have as members of the official party the Secretary of the Air Force, the Honorable Frank Kendall, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. led the charge, braving enemy fire to inspire their fellow warriors to victory. Escorting our nation's colors is the United States Air Force Honor Guard. This 280-member ceremonial unit is made up of various career fields from the Air Force that have served in military conflicts and humanitarian efforts throughout the world. Marching before you with pride is the United States Air Force Honor Guard. A distinctive feature of military ceremonies is the formal presentation of command to the reviewing official. After the commander of troops presents the command, musical honors will be played in honor of the Secretary of the Air Force. Thank you. 
please remain standing for the advancement of the colors and the playing of our national anthem. Department of the Air Force, Chief of Chaplains, Chaplain, Major General Randall E. Kitchens will now deliver the invocation. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we're thankful for this opportunity to celebrate this Air Force tradition for our Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. From Chief Master Sergeant Airy to Chief Master Sergeant Bass and today Chief Master Sergeant Flossy. We are thankful for their leadership and care for our Air Force to fly, fight, and wind and find fulfillment in quality and service. We're thankful for Chief Bass's number 19 leadership in this last chapter. Lord, our airmen and families are far better because of her care, compassion, vision and tenacity to advocate for the human weapons system. We ask that you grant number 19, Ron and family, blue skies and favoring winds into retirement with the affirmation of, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We ask your blessing upon Chief Fossey and assume, as he assumes Chief Master Sergeant number 19 responsibilities, leading our Air Force into the future as one team, one fight. Grant him wisdom beyond his years, multiplied rest, precise focus, and the capacity to care for our airmen, guardians, and families. Be with Chief Lossie and Catherine and his family into the next chapter of our Air Force history with peace and vision for all that is ahead. We pray this in the holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Frank Kendall. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's wonderful to be here to celebrate Chief Joanne Bass's impressive career, a career of service uh, that is unparalleled, and to welcome Chief David Felosi to our team. I'd like to welcome our military, government, civic, and international leaders and guests here today. We're happy to have Representative Tony Gonzalez in the audience. Tony, where are you? 
Uh, I can't resist saying this. If you could pass an appropriations bill for the Defense Department, we'd be very grateful. Uh, but it's great to have you with us. <laughs> Uh, as well as many current and former uh, leaders across the Air Force, the Department of Defense, uh, including our previous Undersecretary of the uh, Air Force, Ortiz, Gene Ortiz Jones. Gene, where are you? Let me get a, there you are. Thank you. Great to see you. Uh, I'd also like to thank the family members supporting our incredible leaders. Their sacrifices and contributions have immeasurable impact. Uh, thank you to Chief Bass's husband, Ron, their daughters, Jada and Jasmine, her mother and stepfather, Young and Jamie. Jamie and her father and stepmother, Hans and Silval. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you. And also uh, to uh, Chief David Felosi's wife, Katie, their three children, Hannah, Bella, and Jack, and his parents, Steve and Linda. Give them a hand, too, please. I understand there are a number of uh, siblings and extended family members here in attendance as well. Welcome to you also. Uh, Chief Bass, Joe, I'm going to call you Joe. I, I very well remember our first coffee talk together where you pulled me aside before he said, and sir, whatever you do on this coffee talk with me, don't call me Joe. <laughs> so I'm going to do it today just as, I, as you're walking out the door. And I think of you as Joe, and I think of you as a great colleague and, and, uh, and, and partner in, in leadership of the Air Force. So we're going to miss you. Uh, thank you for a long and distinguished career of service to this country. Uh, Joe has served over 30 years in the Air Force, and we are an infinitely better organization because of your service. She's been a standout leader at every level and put an amazing capstone on a career of exceptional service as the first woman to serve as the senior enlisted leader in any branch of service in the U.S. military. Give her applause. Please. As I was thinking about that, uh, it, it occurred to me that 50 years ago, almost exactly 50 years ago, I entered a program as an Army Air Defense Officer of school with the first woman lieutenant in the Army Air Defense Branch. I think after 50 years, it's time to stop having firsts and enjoying retiring the first as more and more people serve. Let's give applause to that idea, too, please. Uh, Joe's broken barriers have been a model of what we hope all our airmen, male or female, will become. An amazing capstone on a career of exceptional service. Uh, we often talk about ensuring our airmen can serve to their full potential. Chief Bass, thank you for showing us what that looks like for everybody that serves and for making it possible for others to do the same. We couldn't have asked for a better leader for our enlisted part of our Air Force. I heard that General Brown called Chief Bass to say he had selected her as the chief and this sounds very accurate to me, although I don't know it firsthand, and that uh, as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, and she replied when offered the job, I guess, sir, you made the right damn decision. <laughs> that sounds like a Joe Bass thing to me. I think it's probably true. Um, I second that. It was the right damn decision. Uh, Joe Bass has served as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force for my entire tenure as Secretary, and she's been an unmatched advocate for the welfare of our airmen every single day. Her connection to those airmen was apparent as we traveled together to base, visit bases, and I was able to witness her leadership and her empathy as she fought to understand and solve the problems that our airmen and their families were facing. I can't tell you how much I appreciate her willingness to speak truth to power. I knew I could always count on Joe, whether I wanted to hear it or not, to tell me what I need to know to do a better job and to give me the unvarnished truth on behalf of our airmen and, on the, and their families. Her honest perspective has been incredibly valuable to the department and to me, to me personally, over these last few years. Joanne's service to the Air Force and to our country will be missed. Chief Fossey, you're going to have to fill some pretty big shoes. I look forward to working together and to everything you have to offer, and I want to welcome you to an incredible team. I'm fortunate to have amazing leaders around me leading the department, and we will need your experience and your perspective to make sure the needs of our airmen and their families are always at the forefront of all of our efforts. You do have big shoes to fill, but Chief Bass likes to remind us that what got us here won't get us there, and you're going to help us get there. One of my favorite Chief Bassisms is the response on almost any issue of, sir, we're going to get after that. 
We'll all be looking forward to how you help us get after a range of issues and problems that we have to confront. Welcome aboard. We're starting from a better place because Chief Bass helped us get here. We have confidence you will help us follow through, as General Alvin likes to say. Welcome, Chief Losey. Thank you, and congratulations to Chief Bass. One team, one fight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Brown. Well, good morning. You know, when I was a uh, fighter squadron director of operations, I had a saying that I'd share during mentoring sessions. And as our sons got older, I shared it with them. It was uh, when opportunity knocks, you want to be fully dressed. Meaning when that knock comes, you want to already prepare yourself for the opportunity. This was true for the leader that I'm here to celebrate today. Over the course of a storied career, when opportunity knocked, Joe Bass was fully dressed. She was ready. It's an honor to be able to recognize an outstanding airman, an outstanding leader, and an outstanding friend. Before going any further, I'd like to thank everyone here today who came to celebrate this special day for our Air Force, for the Flossie and Bass families, to our distinguished guests, government elected officials, Department of Defense leadership, general officers, senior enlisted leaders, Joint partners, welcome and thank you for being here. To the men and women of the United States Air Force, thank you for serving with character and honor. Thank you for the sacrifices you make to protect and defend this nation. And thank you to your families that sacrificed alongside you. Let me uh, offer my congratulations to uh, our next Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, number 20. Dave Flossie. Thanks to you, thanks to your family, to Katie, Hannah, Bella, and Jack for all their support. I look forward to watching you lead airmen in our Air Force. Congratulations. <laughs> Shereen and I would also like to uh, thank the uh, Joe Bass's family and friends that are here today. To Ron, Joe's husband of uh, over 27 years, who uh, served 27 years in the Army. Their daughters, Jada, a recent graduate of Texas State, and Jazzy, who will go off to school at George Mason here in the fall. To her parents, her mother Young and her father Hans, and to her extended uh, family and friends from around the country, your influence shaped Joe to being a phenomenal airman. You know, I hired Joe uh, as a 19th Chief Master of the Air Force in 2020. I, I didn't know her personally, but she came highly recommended. I also trust, but verify. And so I had a very extensive uh, hiring process. It was very uh, detailed and thorough. When an opportunity knocked, Joe was ready. Joe made history as the first woman to serve as Chief Master of the Air Force and as the Secretary Hallett, the first senior enlisted leader for any one of our services. I said this uh, four years ago at the change of, change of responsibility ceremony, and it still holds true today. Without a doubt, Chief Master Sergeant Joe Bass was the right chief. She blended Bass experience, expertise, empathy, and impeccable moral character in a resolute will to succeed. Now, before all that, she was a teenager in Hawaii with no plans for her future. So exactly 31 years ago, today, Joe Bass joined our Air Force. After four years, when the decision came to re-enlist or not, 
She stayed in the Air Force so she could pay off her Honda Civic. Just think, if not for a Honda Civic payment, where would we be today? Joe has years of joint experience and multiple deployments in support of combat operations. Throughout her career, opportunity knocked, and Joe was fully dressed. She was ready. She's the Chief of Air Force Enlisted Developmental Education, Command Chief at Goodfellow Air Force Base, and Command Chief for 2nd Air Force. Joe, uh, uh, every single step in her Air Force journey was in preparation for the knock of opportunity, the opportunity to be the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Joe, so, uh, Joe also had the right personality and strength of character for the job. She meets airmen where they are, propelling the transformations our force requires. She has the right mix of approachability and unyielding resolve. She is welcoming, but also formidable. She gives people the tools to succeed and then holds them to standard. In meetings when something doesn't quite add up, Joe gives the eyebrow. Then she tells you exactly what's wrong, and then she gives you a reassuring smile and a laugh. You know, as the Chief, uh, uh, Chief of Staff uh, of the Air Force Number 22, I had four action orders, A, B, C, D, Airmen, bureaucracy, competition, and design, implement and design implementation. Joe was my point person for action order A, Airmen. She drove necessary change to our force with the Enlisted Force Development Action Plan and the Blueprint, ensuring every airman received the guidance and opportunities needed to become leaders ready for tomorrow's challenges. She updated our brown and blue books, revamping our foundational documents on enlisted force structure and our core values. And she developed the Purple Book, a guide on how airmen fight jointly and contribute to the joint team. Joe Bass also expanded opportunities to cross-chain to new career fields, ensuring we retain qualified and trained airmen. Joe, you led our Air Force to be more open, more agile, more responsive, and more capable. You have a bias for action, and you tackled our largest challenges. Just like Patrick Mahomes, when there's less than two minutes left in the Super Bowl, you're down by three, not only score, but you take it in overtime to win. Just like him, I want the ball in your hands because you always find a way to get it done. Now, as many of you know, I'm, I'm a huge NFL fan, and I often watch the NFL network when I'm at home doing my homework. And recently, I enjoyed an, air, uh, an episode of A Football Life about the legendary quarterback, Doug Williams. It reminded me of Joe Bass. You know, 1978, the NFL had no African-American general managers, head coaches, or starting quarterbacks. Now, Doug Williams was coming out of Grambling State University with limited scouting prospects to be an NFL quarterback. But before the draft, his head coach, Eddie Robinson, was asked, what will it take for Doug Williams to make it in the NFL. He paused. He answered, somewhat matter-of-factly, an opportunity to play. And play he did. Doug Williams was the first African-American quarterback to start, win, and be the MVP of a Super Bowl. An opportunity knocked. He was fully dressed. He was ready. Doug Williams was not the first African-American quarterback to have the talent, the work ethic, and the skill to win a Super Bowl, but he was the first to be given an opportunity. Before 2020, the Air Force and all of our service had never had a woman serve as Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force or Senior Enlisted Advisor until Joe Bass. What did it take to get her, get her there? An opportunity. Joe, I'm so glad I hired you. You've been an inspiration to me. We were able to break barriers together. You've been an inspiration to our Air Force. 
you've been an inspiration to our nation. Thanks to you, thanks to Ron, Jada, and Jazzy for your service, for your sacrifice, and for your dedication to our nation. Now, I know you plan to spend more time with family in retirement, but I also know, no matter what opportunity knocks next, you'll be fully dressed and you'll be ready. Joe, Ron, Shereen, and I wish you the very best in retirement. I'm going to miss working with you. God bless you and your family. God bless our United States Air Force. God bless our joint team. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Alden. Good morning. It is so great to be here today. I find myself in a bit of an unusual situation, so uh, if I can maybe stick with a little bit of the uh, sports parlance. You know, we're still having the DTs from the Super Bowl being done, and I'm still waiting on opening day. But I find myself uh, in baseball vernacular uh, hitting third in the batting lineup here. And ordinarily, the job of whoever's batting third and whoever's batting cleanup, you know, the leadoff hitter is supposed to just get on base. Maybe the number two hitter, uh, you know, pushes him or her around, puts him in scoring position, and number three and number four are supposed to be the heavy hitters to maybe get the multiple RBIs and score the runs. But I'm not quite sure what you do when uh, the leadoff hitter and the number two hitter have already hit home runs. So to Secretary Kendall and, and to the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, thank you so much for being here. And your words really, uh, they eclipse anything I could say as far as, uh, you know, uh, the novelty of it or, or how much, how deeply we care uh, about uh, Joe Bass and are excited about this transition. Uh, but I will say this. First of all, I, I do want to echo uh, the welcome and how honored we are to have all of the distinguished leadership here. Leadership in uniform, out of uniform, former Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force, elected representatives, all those show that we recognize as a country the importance of ceremonies like this. Because we do transition. It's not the person. It's somewhat the position, but it's mostly that continuity. We show to ourselves that we have an unbroken string of excellence every single day. Ten minutes before this ceremony started, our airmen were all over the world and they were getting it done. They're hacking the mission, they're committed, and they're supporting the nation's defense. Ten minutes after the ceremony, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to have a different Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, but that seamless transition, that unbroken, unflinching demonstration of commitment to the nation, that's what makes us strong. And so that's why these are important, and you recognize that today. So I'm just very, very proud to share this with you. So a lot has already been said about Joe. So I'm just going to give you my personal reflection on this because, uh, you know, I was uh, selected as vice chief of staff, and I, I trailed uh, Chief Bass by about 90 days coming in. And I figured, all right, we're both going to get the chief's vision, John Brown's vision, and, and I'll just trail her by a little bit, and then we can sort of – off we go together. So I, I get in the seat, and I'm still trying to find out which desk drawer to put my pens in, and she's already running. She is sprinting out of the gate. She was a woman in a hurry because she knew she had guidance from the chief, she knew what to do, she had a passion for it, she was ready and she was off and running. Connecting with the airmen, passing the vision, getting the feedback, and throughout her tenure she did that. Passing the, the message that, you know, it's okay to drop barriers. It doesn't mean you're dropping quality. That Standards, it's not a four-letter word. It's a foundation about what makes us good. The connection and the feedback and the pulse of the force, nonstop. And even after I got my feet under me, I figured, ah, she'll slow down, I'll, I'll catch up with her. We did. We were across the hall. I'm not sure I ever fully caught up with her, but I always running and trying. And she continued that throughout her tenure here. And that's why I was so grateful when I was nominated and confirmed for this position that I was going to have a, a mature sprinter that was already out there that was going to be able to team up with to help me get my legs under me when I moved down the hall. 
But like I said, I, I didn't think she was going to keep going as fast as she did. But, you know, in, in the words of Forrest Gump, you know, she just kept on running. <laughs> and as she departs, you know what? Picture the movie. Remember when he's on the field, scores a touchdown? He just kept on running. She's going to take off the uniform, but she's going to keep on running. I know that. She is going to follow the heritage of the Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force before her. She's going to keep an eye on us. She's going to keep providing influence. She's going to keep breaking barriers wherever she goes. And Joe Bass is going to continue to provide value to our Air Force. So I very much appreciate the opportunity to work with you, Simpson, and wish you the best of luck in your retirement. So transition. Where do we go from here? Folks, I will tell you, when I was told I was being considered for this the spring before and then into the summer, I started thinking about what, what was the value that I was going to bring as Chief of Staff of the Air Force during the tenure if I was confirmed. And so you've heard this the thing called follow through. It's this idea that we do stand on the shoulders of giants. The ideas are out there. The concepts are being developed. Perhaps the best thing we can offer is to get to some of the implementation. And then serendipitously, over the summer and the fall and into winter, the Department of the Air Force undertook this rather ambitious project called Reoptimizing for Great Power Competition. And that fell right in line with what I thought I might be able to offer. But you need good teammates. And so as I looked over the candidates, and ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, we have a wealth of riches here. It's an embarrassment of riches. We have so many qualified. Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force. I'm, I'm going to stop on that for a second. We have the most powerful, respected, and feared military and Air Force in the world because we have the most professional and capable enlisted force in the world. That is the envy of both fear and foe alike. And that secret sauce, that magic, continues to repeat on itself and go over and over and endure because that system works. And you look no further than the candidates that I had in front of me as I was considering who might be the next Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. We had some seriously can uh, qualified candidates. So I thought to myself, what is it that I'm looking for? And you might ask yourself, why Dave Flossett? I mean, all the prerequisites are there. Sure, the, 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 bar the, the price of entry is you've got to have the experience. You've got to have the foundation. And Team Flossie, because it is Team Flossie, they entered this journey together. Katie's been with him the whole time. And it came from great roots, a great foundation that Steve and Linda laid out for them back from when he was a kid. And of course, we're not going to forget Grandma Shirley who's out there streaming. Grandson did good. He's still crushing it. That's, that's just one of the prerequisites. You have to be effective. You have to show your leadership. You have to show your experience, your competence, all of that. It was there thriving in a community in the nuclear business where it's punishing for anything less than excellence. He excelled there. Working with NATO, deploying, working with allies and partners and coalition, all those were there. And he absolutely excelled in every single one of those experiences. Got a lot of chiefs that do that. So what was it about Dave Flossie? I'll tell you. I was thinking about the role that I would undertake and the teammate that I would need to help serve our Air Force. And if we're going to do this following through, if we are going to implement the changes, if we are going to re-optimize it's going to be tough. We're going to have to do some change management. We're going to have to break some China if we're going to break some China. See what I did there? Wait for it. There you go. Implementation is not going to be an easy thing. Changing an enterprise with a proud heritage and culture is going to take nuance. It's going to take sophistication. It's going to take a connection with the airmen that we lead to not only describe what we're doing, but why. How are they going to find themselves in it? What is the underlying purpose? 
And if they have better ideas, we need a senior leader who's willing to listen, to take that in, and maybe change our path a little bit. And I need that teammate who's going to walk into my office if I'm heading the wrong direction and maybe a little bit too stubborn in my path and say, hey, I'm hearing some things, we might have a better idea. Because team, we know the general direction. I can't tell you the precise heading on every single one of those, but we know the direction. So I wanted to ensure that my teammate, my wingman on this is someone who can analyze, who can evaluate, but who listens. And that's Dave Flossie. He has a, he's an analytic mind, a little bit of that from Affitt, some other school, and he's a pretty smart cookie. But at the same time, he's one of those guys who, who can take a, a concept. He, he has the vision to be able to, to paint you that beautiful island that everybody wants to go to in great detail. But he also has the rare ability to tell you the steps that you need to get to that island. And that's a rare combination. And because of those things, he is principled without being inflexible. This is exactly what we need. All of those attributes are there. And so while all the candidates were so compelling, it was pretty easy to pick for me, quite frankly. And then once we had a chance to talk and chat, it was the chemistry was there too. So I feel very, very confident. Oh, and by the way, I like his barber, but that's another thing. We're both good at it. So as we have a bittersweet moment, and we do celebrate, we do celebrate what SimSAF 19 has brought. And we honor that by picking that up and building on that. The path ahead is going to require the teamwork that I know the Team Flossie, the Team Auburn, and the entire Air Force is going to enjoy as we move our Air Force forward in these challenging and consequential times. So again, Joe, thank you so much for what you've done. Dave, thanks for what we're going to do together. And everyone, thank you for being here, and thank you for being a part of our Air Force family. Thank you. In an honored tradition, Chief Master Sergeant David A. Flossie's spouse, Mrs. Catherine Flossie, and their children, Jack, Bella, and Hannah Flossie, will now present Chief Flossie his new service dress coat, bearing the insignia of his new position as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. In the late 1960s, Congressman L. Mandel Rivers, Chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, initiated hearings about changing the enlisted promotion system. Congressman Rivers believed all of the services should have a top senior enlisted person, so he introduced a bill that would mandate the appointment of a senior non-commissioned officer by each branch of service. In 1967, General John P. McConnell, Air Force Chief of Staff, selected Chief Master Sergeant Paul W. Airy to serve as the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Nineteen chiefs have since held this highest enlisted level of leadership. While the responsibilities for the position have evolved over the years, one aspect has remained constant. The Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force represents the enlisted corps and their interest to the American public and to all levels of government. The position serves as a personal advisor to the Chief of Staff and the Secretary of the Air Force on all issues regarding the readiness, welfare, and proper utilization of the force. Today, the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force leads more than 600,000 total force enlisted airmen. General Alvin will now exchange the service cap bearing the insignia of Chief Flossie's new position as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force.
on behalf of the men and women of the United States Air Force, General Alvin's spouse, Mrs. Gina Alvin, will now come forward to present Mrs. Catherine Flossing with flowers as a warm welcome to the Air Force leadership team. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, David A. Flossie. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Mr. Secretary, Chairman Brown, General Alvin, fellow airmen, family and friends, Good morning and thank you for being here. It is an honor to stand before you today. I am humbled by the weight of the legacy preceding me and I'm inspired by the challenges ahead. Katie and my entire family, both here in person and online, you've not only supported me on this journey, but I would not be standing here today if it weren't for each of you. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, General Alvin, thank you for your confidence in me. Thank you for this opportunity to lead and serve the finest airmen in the world. SEAC Black, fellows, service, SEAs, I know we have a lot of work to do and I look forward to serving with each of you. Chief Master on the Space Force, Pennsylvania, I could not ask for a better partner as we move together to achieve the department's objectives. Thanks for your friendship. Former SEAC, former Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force, thank you for being here. You all blazed the trail for our service, and each of you continue to leave a lasting legacy. Former Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, Toby Toberman, it's wonderful to see you here. You inspired many airmen through the years, and you made history, becoming the department's first senior enlisted leader for our newest service. You led with humility and grace. I hope to lead others the way you led and mentored me. Elected general officers, elected officials, community leaders, industry partners, thank you for being here today as well. I also look forward to working with you. Special thank you to Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Bass and Ron. Thank you for your leadership, dedication, and service to our nation. Your commitment to the enlisted force has left an indelible mark on our airmen, and we are grateful for your leadership. Everyone who helped today's ceremony, we've got an amazing Air Force Honor Guard behind me. Air Force Band, PA, Protocol, the members of the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Team 19, her crew. Uh, these ceremonies only take about an hour to pull off, but they take months to plan, resource, and rehearse. So thanks to each and every one of you. As we prepared for this new responsibility, I came to rely on a small but mighty crew of proven professionals. Chief Scott, Jocelyn, Lambert, Ludd, Fitch, along with Master Sergeants Kent and Janes, the team had, they all had full-time jobs, but they offered their expertise to prepare me for the task ahead. So thanks to each of you. Chief Shevin Bakavar, who I can now say, at least for the last two to four minutes, is serving as a senior advisor to the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. I appreciate your tireless effort, positive attitude. Thanks for being a great wingman. Please join me in a round of applause to this entire team for a job extremely well done. We live in a rapidly evolving world. New threats emerge with alarming frequency and the demands on our Air Force continue to grow. Our airmen are busy. Our nation is asking a lot. It can be a challenge to meet the demand. While demanding, I am confident in our ability to rise to the occasion. I'm confident because over the years and through the course of my career, from, from the underground to flight lines to missile fields and beyond, I've witnessed the tenacity dedication and professionalism of our airmen. As we find ourselves at an inflection point in our nation's history, facing serious challenges, it's worth remembering we have faced daunting tasks before, and we have consistently risen to the occasion. 
from the dawn of aviation and predating but establishing the need for an independent Air Force, air-minded leaders proved crucial to our nation's defense time and time again. I'd be remiss if I didn't specifically mention Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force No. 1, Paul Airy. Chief Airy served as an aerial gunner and a radio operator in World War II. After bailing out of a damaged aircraft over Hungary, he was captured and imprisoned. Suffering through forced marches, abuse, and deplorable conditions, Airy served with honor and was liberated near, uh, nearly a year later, weighing less than 100 pounds. So what did he do next? He re-enlisted. He went on to serve with distinction in the Korean War, later becoming the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Chief Airy's career exemplified what is today our core values, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. He has set a standard for future generations of enlisted leaders to follow. Many brave airmen acted as pioneers, transforming our Air Force for the better. They have shown us the importance of resilience, innovation, and agility in the face of adversity. Their legacy serves as a constant reminder of the responsibilities we bear as airmen in the profession of arms. The impact we have is also noteworthy when we strive for excellence in all we do. Today, as we stand on the dawn of a new era, we recognize we are serving at a time of consequence. It is imperative we acknowledge the urgency of the challenges we face. As General Alvin recently stated, in these moments, the true spirit of our Air Force shines brightest, a spirit of innovation, vision, and courage, which has guided us through the most challenging times in modern history. Our airmen, each of you, are doing everything the nation is asking you to do. We must remain an aligned and focused workforce to continue to meet the demands of our nation. Fellow airmen, the Secretary has been crystal clear. We are out of time. We must transform our force to meet the strategic challenges presented by an era of great power competition. We will shift in our force design and presentation, optimizing for speed, agility, and innovation in the face of emerging threats. We value missions and outcomes over processes and functions, ensuring we're ready to face the inevitable next seminal event. Fellow Airmen, my commitment to you and to our Air Force is unwavering. As we navigate the complexities of great power competition and seek to optimize our force, I pledge to be your wingman. I'm committed to ensuring our Air Force is prepared to meet these challenges head on. Every day matters, and we must make every day count. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, our winning team will continue to fly, fight, and win air power anytime, anywhere. Thank you. As we welcome Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Flossie today, we now honor Chief Bass as she retires from the United States Air Force. Please rise as General Alvin presents the Defense Distinguished Service Medal to Chief Bass. Attention to orders. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Joanne S. Bass, United States Air Force, distinguished herself by exceptionally meritorious service as Chief Master Sergeant of the United States Air Force from 14 August 2020 to 8 March 2024. During this period, Chief Bass' selfless leadership, relentless initiative, and trailblazing achievements as the highest ranking enlisted member in the United States Air Force were vital in leading and developing 689,000 airmen to dominate in great power competition. As the senior enlisted advisor to the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, she provided exquisite advice, perspective, and assistance on enterprise management, enlisted development, force design, and service member benefits. Chief Bass created the service's first ever enlisted force development action plan, overhauled the enlisted force structure, and Profession of Arms foundational documents, delivered a first-ever Joint Service Manual for Airmen, 
modernized enlisted talent management, advocated with Sister Service Senior Enlisted Advisor for a general update of pay and compensation, and led defense-wide quality of life improvements in integrated mental health services, housing, and dislocation allowances. She hosted the first ever Child Care Summit on behalf of the Department of Defense, exploring actions to improve access to child care while reframing child care as a mission requirement rather than a dependent benefit. Chief Bass expanded benefits to millions of service members, families, and retirees, improving access to affordable food, goods, and services while alleviating food insecurity. She aided the stand-up of the United States Space Force, easing the transfer of Air Force support, assets, and personnel while exploring future service concept of technical tracks, warrant officer, line of duty officer, and proficiency pay. Chief Bass strengthened partner nation bonds through seven international senior enlisted leader summits, elevating our partner's senior enlisted advisors in the Indo-Pacific, Europe, Africa, and Middle East achieving parity across the allied enlisted development efforts and building a globally connected non-commissioned officer corps. The distinctive accomplishments of Chief Bash reflect great credit upon herself, the Department of the Air Force, and the Department of Defense. Please remain standing as General Alvin retires Chief Bass. The order. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Washington, District of Columbia, Special Order Number AC-011593, dated 13 December 2023, by order of the Secretary of the Air Force. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Joanne S. Bass, is retired from active duty, effective 1 June 2024 after more than 31 years of faithful and honorable duty. Please be seated. Chief Bass, we are pleased to present you with the following certificate from our Commander-in-Chief. It reads, I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world embody the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., Commander-in-Chief. General Alvin will now present Chief Bass's spouse, Mr. Ron Bass, and their daughters, Jada and Jasmine Bass, with the Air Force retirement pin to pin on Chief Bass's service coat.
please stand as General Alvin presents the Distinguished Public Service Award to Mr. Bass. In recognition of his distinguished public service to the United States Air Force from 14 August 2020 through 8 March 2024. As a respected ambassador, Mr. Bass consulted with service members and dependents throughout the world and passionately championed improved quality of life services for over 200,000 Air Force families. Moreover, Mr. Bass mentored 126 new command chief spouses on the challenges Air Force families face across the enterprise and how leaders can better help those families. Furthermore, as the first male spouse of a service senior enlisted advisor and board member of the Air Force Aid Society, Mr. Bass provided unprecedented perspective to the Department of the Air Force senior leaders through leadership panels, national media spots, and White House events. This provided an appreciation of the challenges of the diverse modern military family and informed key changes to support the ever-increasing population of male spouses. The distinctive accomplishments of Mr. Ron Bass reflect great credit upon himself and the Department of the Air Force. Please be seated. General Alvin will now present Mr. Bass with a certificate of appreciation from the Department of the Air Force. It reads, in grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents this certificate of recognition to Ron Bass for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Given this first day of June 2024, signed Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, General David W. Alvin. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, 
Joanne S. Bass, United States Air Force, retired. Good morning. Okay, y'all. So I have to let you know, first off, that um, my allergies have been acting up since Monday. A lot of dust and pollen in the air here in the D.C. area. And so if you start to hear a sniffle or some dust getting around, I'm going to need some help. So I'm going to need you to do me a favor and just shout out, go Chiefs. You got it? All right, so we're going to practice. <laughs> All right, good, good. Okay, I think that's going to work. So first off, I have to give honor to God for his everlasting grace, for his mercy. And for being my rock after all these years. He has given me way more than I deserve, and my cup overflows, especially at the site here today. Wow. Like three and a half years of serving as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Actually, it's been three years, six months, and 23 days. And I am also very excited to be retiring on my 31st Air Force anniversary today, which also happens to be International Women's Day. And somehow the song, Run the World, by Beyonce is literally playing in my head. For real. For real. So I have to give credit where credit is due, and I have to thank my dad because he is absolutely the reason why I started this journey. He used to tell me four years in the military never hurt anybody. How many of you all had parents who said just that? I'm still wondering which four years he was talking about. What I really think is he actually just didn't want to pay for my college. In any case, Dad, it all you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Mr. Secretary, General Brown, General Alvin, all of the senior leaders here today, friends, family, fellow airmen, the Flossie family, Thank you all so much for being here. I am honored to stand before you as a fellow airman, wingman, and your 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. There are so many people in this hangar and watching online that I must, that I must thank. However, if, if I can, if you'll just allow me to share a little bit of the work that we've done over the past three and a half years and how proud I am of what we've gotten after, and how it has shaped the trajectory of our Air Force. When General Brown hired me, he wanted to focus on accelerating the change that we need. And to that, we needed to focus on the force that we have now and the force of the future. The force we have today has been largely focused on countering violent extremism for the past 30 years. Our force has been adaptive, efficient, and successful. And while we've been focused in orienting to our most sophisticated peer and near peer adversaries, we've also spent a lot of time focusing on elevating the strategic IQ of our force by ensuring that every airman understands what is at stake today and in the future. We've revamped our military training and education. Big thanks and kudos to AETC to better prepare our airmen for great power competition. As you've heard in the decoration and through General Brown, we rolled out foundational documents such as the Enlisted Force Development Action Plan, the blueprint, which I wish I had when I was a young airman, the blue, the brown, and the purple bucks. We also spent a lot of time focusing on strengthening our relationships with our partners and allies, 
at the NCO level. In fact, we hosted the department's largest international engagement to date with over 60 Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Forces representing their air, nation's Air Force coming here to D.C. to focus on NCO development to include a visit from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Ukrainian Air Force. I have to give a shout out and thanks to my colleague, Warrant Officer John Hall. John, where are you at? for being here today from Canada and representing our Five Eyes. Thank you so much for being here. We also spent a lot of time focused on the resiliency of the force. We heard you. And from, the, from a bottom-up perspective, we established a Fortify the Force initiative team to help us get after the barriers that impact the resilience of our airmen, our guardians, and our family members. We also rolled out the spectrum of resilience, which highlights the resources associated with strengthening our force from the inside out. There are many, many, many more things that we've done, but those right there will largely be what I remain proud of, as well as our amazing airmen. That said, it took all of us to get after it, and the work doesn't happen without a strong team with strong values. If you'll indulge me for a couple moments to acknowledge some of them. First, none of these things happen without these people. Secretary Kendall, General Brown, General Alvin, thank you for letting me be me. You gave me the latitude and the support, and when needed, you helped to clear out the obstacles. General Brown, Chairman, sir, thank you for hiring me as your wingman in chief. The best words that you ever shared with me were proceed until apprehended. <laughs> and I did just that. I got apprehended a few times, y'all, maybe, maybe three times. In any case, sir, you let me be me. You let me get after the things that matter to our airmen and our families. And it's been an honor for Ron and I to serve alongside both you and Shireen. General Alvin, sir, I could not think of a better leader to lead our United States Air Force as a Chief of Staff. Thank you for allowing me to be your wingman for the past several months. I will forever be on your wing as you ensure our force is ready during this time of great consequence. To the former Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force, some which are here today, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Benkin, Finch, Murray, McKinley, Roy and Chief Master on the Air Force right. Y'all give them a hand clap. All of you have been my rock through this journey. Thank you to each of you for charting the path for our enlisted force. And now to Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force number 20. General Alvin, sir, you selected well. Chief Flossie is absolutely the right leader we need as we continue to transform and re-optimize our force. Dave, your experience within the Air Force Enterprise and Air Force Materiel Command is invaluable as we reorient to this new threat. You are a thought leader who discerns and leads with heart. Your experiences throughout your career have led you here and our airmen, our families, and our future will be better because of you at the helm. Not to mention you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan. It makes me so much more confident in your abilities to lead as the Chief Master in the Air Force. I mean, he knows what a winning, winning team is, so that's a good thing, right, team? Um, shout out to the 49ers fans. There's always next year. There's always next year. To my Space Force brothers, first Toby and now B9. I can think of no one better to have served as the first and the second Chief Master Sergeants of the Space Force. We are always one team, one fight, and I could not be a bigger fan of our United States Space Force. We must continue to dominate in space, and with leaders like General Saltzman, yourselves, and the guardians behind you, I am confident that we will win and we will dominate. To our Air Force Senior Enlisted Leader Council, 
past and present MAGCOM and COCOM chiefs and advisors, it has been my high honor to serve alongside you. Your passion for making our Air Force better is evident and it is appreciated. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the shared meals of Korean food and the stories that we, will sh that we shared and will forever stay in secret. You are stuck with me for life. To my fellow Defense Senior Enlisted Leadership Council, led by the former SEAC number three and now SEAC Troy Black, as well as our service SEAs, it has been an honor of a lifetime to also serve alongside you. Our joint force is stronger and more integrated because of your strong leadership. We got a lot done, and while there were occasional Air Force and sometimes Space Force jabs, thank you to all of my joint brothers and sisters because you are actually the Air Force's best recruiters. Thanks for sending your children to join the U.S. Air Force. <laughs> Troy, Troy Black's not smiling. Thank you. Okay. From A A1 to A10 to the entire Secretariat staff to everybody, especially in this area over here, thank you all for the work that you do that is unseen. Thank you for making our aspirations come to life. I know I certainly had a lot of them. Thanks for the work that you've done. To our elected officials, community partners, our business and our industry leaders, thank you all for being here as well. Your commitment to our service members and their families and our nation matters now more than ever. To everyone who helped with today's ceremony, our amazing Air Force Honor Guard, our Air Force Band, PA Protocol, all the setup and teardown crews, thank you for honoring myself and Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Number 20. It's not, not lost on us how many hours you spent to make this happen. You all join me in a hand clap for them. All right, a few more acknowledgments and thank, thank yous. As I reflect on not just these past three and a half years, but the past 31 years, I cannot help but think about the village that has surrounded me to help shape the person that I am. I do have to thank our Air Force chaplains, some of which are here today. These are the folks that prayed with me and prayed for me and the folks that I meet with routinely because I need a lot of prayer, especially when you work in the Pentagon. So thank you so much, chaplains. For the daily messages and weekly check-ins by many of you, it really did mean the world to me. I often share that I've learned the keys to success. And the keys to success are to surround yourself by people who are more talented and more smarter than you. So Team 19, past and present, please stand up. And Lieutenant Sloan and Megan, please stand up. Don't sit down yet. Don't sit down. My time as the Chief Master in the Air Force has only been effective because of you and the great work that you do day in and day out. You are the engine that makes this all possible. I know I ask a lot of you. I feed you a lot of coffee. You deliver every time. Thank you so much. I love each and every one of you. We are family for life. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs, thank you. That was my sister, thanks. To my parents, you are my foundation. We're not gonna talk about how I got in trouble during delayed enlistment. We're not going to talk about how I was banned from every military installation in Hawaii. I mean, how, do, how does that even happen, Dad? We're not going to talk about that. What we are going to talk about is a strong foundation that you gave me. So please accept these flags flown over the Pentagon during my tenure as a Chief Master in the Air Force as a token of my love and respect for you as my parents. Thank you so much. To my girls, you know how much I love you. I tell you every single day, and I told you all last night, as well as a lot of my family and friends, you have lived that military child life. You've left friends, you've made new ones, 
You've been on lots of different softball teams. You've never complained once. You taught me the true essence of perseverance and unconditional love. Girls, I'm so proud of the young ladies that you've become. Being a girl mom is like having best friends that have no money. We're going to go on a lot of vacations, though, a lot of them. To my husband, Ron, who I don't give enough credit to, you have taught me so much over the years. As a young airman, I remember you teaching me to shake the dust off my boots, keep trucking, and don't take things personal. You taught me to take the hard right and not the easy left and to not make decisions based on how you feel because feelings come and go. But the best decision that I've made is marrying you. All right, one more time, y'all. All right, all right. To one of my supervisors, actually I have lots of supervisors that are here in the audience today. But in particular, Staff Sergeant Sherada Coleman, now Dr. Coleman, you represent every supervisor, flight chief, commander that has invested in me, so thank you. I'll never forget, as a young 19-year-old, jumping in Staff Sergeant Coleman's car, and she would always play gospel music. And I was like, Sergeant Coleman, can we please listen to something hip and her answer was always, no. <laughs> to my tribe here today, you know who you are. You've traveled from places like Amman, Jordan, the UK, Germany, California, Texas, Florida. Thank you for investing and pouring into me. To all of my fellow airmen currently serving across the globe, we are the world's greatest air force because of you. And I leave this job knowing that our Air Force is in great hands. As I prepare to step off this stage for the last time, I'd like to share just a few words that I shared last week at basic training graduation. I wanted to keep it simple and I wanted to make sure that they would remember. So I, get, I left three points with our 785 newest airmen and guardian graduates. I kept it simple by calling it BMT. And so the B stands for be your best. You are absolutely part of a winning team that continues a legacy of valor. Simply stated, what you do every single day matters. M, move the ball and make a difference. Whether you serve four years, six years, eight years, or 28 years, I ask you to make your career fields better, I ask you to make your organization better, and I ask you to make our Air Force better. T stands for take care of one another. You are part of this Air Force family. Family over everything. And we, we are forever family. Whether you are one of our newest airmen or longest serving airmen, these three things, BMT, still applies. Every single day we ought to be asking ourselves, am I my best? Am I moving the ball and am I making a difference? And am I taking care of my fellow wingmen, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors? I tried to do this every day as your Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. And I ask you to look in the mirror and ask yourself the very same thing. It has been my honor and privilege of a lifetime to serve alongside each and every one of you. I am forever on your wing. God bless you. God bless our great Air Force. And God bless the United States of America.
Please be seated. It is customary for the senior official to receive the pass in review. However, today, Secretary Kendall has deferred this honor to the 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Chief Bass. As a reminder, everyone should stand as the colors pass before them and military members in uniform should salute. Please be seated. In recognition of her 31 years of service, the United States Air Force Band Ceremony of Brass will now play a special tribute in honor of Chief Bass.
the men and women of the Department of the Air Force are proud to have served with Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force 19 Bass and wish her and Mr. Bass every success in their future endeavors. The Department of the Air Force also extends a warm welcome to Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force and Mrs. Flossie. Please rise and remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please join the official party in congratulating Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force and Mrs. Flossie and Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force 19 Bass and Mr. Bass in their respective receiving lines. There will be a reception immediately following on the left side of the hangar. Please remain at your seats until an usher directs you to depart. Thank you for your patience and we wish you a pleasant day.